Hello students, this is our fourth video on sound lesson from class 9. In this video, we are going to discuss about echo, multiple ref deflections of sound and reverberation. If we clap or shout in a large building, we are able to hear it back. What we call that? We call that as echo. So what is an echo? Let us understand what is an echo to be. Okay. So, we already know that sound travels in the form of compression and rarefaction, compression and rarefaction, compression and rarefaction. And if it encounters an obstacle, it will bounce back from, a, from that obstacle and travels again like compression and rarefaction, compression and rarefaction. So, sound wave, when it encounters an obstacle, it is bounced back. This is called reflection of sound. And so, like reflection of light, sound waves also follow the same rules as reflection of sound. So now we know that sound waves are reflected back. This is called as reflection of sound. Then what is an echo? An echo is repetition of sound due to reflection of sound. Repetition of sound due to reflection of sound is known as an echo. Now we know that sound always reflects so, if sound always reflects, then why don't we hear the reflections all the time? Now, when I am speaking, I should be able to hear the reflection all the time, no? So, if we are able to hear the reflection all the time, then what would have happened? It would have been very noisy. All the time, everybody is speaking and everything reflecting back would have been very noisy. Then, it's not happening. So, then what is happening? So, there is something which is preventing it from happening. What is that? That is the sensation of sound persists in our brain for 0.1 seconds. So if the sound is reflected within this 0.1 second, our brain is not going to register that. So the difference between the original sound and the reflected sound, if it is more than 0.1 second, then only our brain will register. So, we can hear an you know, echo only if this difference is 0.1 second. Now, at this time when I am speaking, we are not able to hear an echo because the difference between the original sound and the reflected sound is less than 0.1 second. So, in a large building or an empty building or mountains, what happens? The distance is more. So, the difference between the personal sound and the reflected sound will be more than 0.1 second. Now, uh, let us understand what should be the minimum distance for an echo to be heard. Can we calculate this? Yes, we can because we already know the formula speed is equal to distance over time. And if we know the speed of sound in the air, we can calculate this. So, uh, obviously, we already know the speed of sound in air is 344 meter per second at 22 degrees Celsius. And the persistence of sound, sound, sound that is nothing but time is 0 0.1 second. If we substitute these two in our equation, S is equal to D by T. If we cross multiply, D will become D is equal to S into T. In the place of S, I have substituted 344. In place of T, I have substituted 0 0.4. So, this will become 34.4 meter. So, the minimum distance to hear a distinct echo is 34.4 meter. But, if a person is standing here, so the minimum distance, total minimum distance is 34.4 meter. This is the distance for the sound to travel, hit and bounce back. This is the total distance. But what is actually the distance that it should be divided? To and fro distance is 34.4. So one way distance will be 34.4 divided by 2. That is nothing but 17.2 meter. So what is the minimum distance at which an object should be placed for a distant echo to be heard, that is nothing but 17.2 meter. Now, now this is a minimum distance for an echo to be heard. But can we found, find out at what distance an object is placed if we know 
sound and time? Of course, yes. If we know the speed and the time, then we can calculate the distance at which object is placed. And this process is known as echo ranging or echo locating. Even the bats and the dolphins use the same process to identify the position of their prey. So this process we will understand better in our next video. Okay, let us know the uses of this multiple reflection. See, you might have seen in concert halls or cinemas or big big auditorium, the ceiling is always curved or arched like this. They are arched so that the sound reaches all the corners of the auditorium. So, sound starts from this point. If it is originated, somebody is playing piano or singing in this point, sound waves travel like this and then once they hit this arch, this one, they get reflected back in all the directions. So they will be able to reach all the corners of the cinema hall at the auditorium. So these uh, ceilings are arched. In some of the auditoriums, they keep something called as sound board, which reflects the sound in all the directions. And one more application of this multiple reflection, which you might have seen all the time is loudspeaker. Loudspeaker, horns and megaphones, all these are devised in the same way. Because here what happens when the sound enters in this direction, it is directed only front. It will get reflected from here and then it is directed towards in the forward motion. It won't scatter, sound waves will not scatter all the way. So the audience who are seated here are the people who are here will be able to listen properly because of sound, the reflection of sound. Next application of uh, multiple reflection is stethoscope. Doctors use stethoscope to hear the heartbeat. Inside the stethoscope, sound reflected may, gets reflected many times to reach the destination. So these are the three important uses of multiple reflection. Are there any negative effects of this echo? Yes, which is called as reverberation. If there is too much echo or too much overlapping of sound echo, it is called as reverberation. Reverberation is nothing but repeated reflection which results in overlapping of sound. If it is reflected one time, we will be able to hear properly. But if it is reflected many times, the sound will be overlapped on each other and we will not be able to hear anything distinctly. It, this is called as reverberation. So in the big halls, they have to reduce this reverberation to hear a distinct voice. So in order to reduce this reverberation, they use the curtains which are thicker, which have sound absorbent materials or else they use the materials, seating materials only which are sound absorbent or they will put some other materials in the roofs which can absorb sound. So these are, this is nothing. This is about the reverberation. So let us have a quick recap of what all we learned in this video. Echo. Echo is nothing but repetition of sound due to reflection of sound. Uses of multiple reflections of sound. Multiple reflections of sound is used in stethoscope. It is used in the design of concert halls. It is also used in design of loudspeakers. Reverberation is nothing but overlapping of multiple re reflections. These are the concepts we learned in this video. In the next video, we will learn about uses of ultrasound. If you have any doubts, please feel free to comment, uh, post in the comment section below.